Hello, we are Memphis Community University. Today we are continuing our intro to proof-based math and we are talking about the binomial theorem. So you really can't talk about counting without talking about the binomial theorem because the binomial coefficients, as we talked about in the last video, arise naturally when you are counting subsets of things. So remember that uh, what, for example, 3 choose 1 means or 5 choose 3, that means that you are counting the number of subsets of size k, so for 5 choose 3, that'd be size 3, when you're choosing between five different possibilities. And what's remarkable is that this formula holds um, when you're doing for these binomial coefficients. So basically, if you look at this, what I drew here, if you take this row right here, here n would be 4, and then k would be 4 as well. Uh, k minus minus one would then be three. You're subtracting one. So what happens is that when if you add these two together, you will form this third uh, binomial coefficient, which is uh, five choose four. Same value right here, and then adding one. So uh, we will actually prove this formula in the last part of this video. If you want, you can also sort of think about it in terms of counting and subsets and things like that. But with this formula, you're able to form this nice little triangle. And of course, that is called Pascal's triangle. You might have seen this in a previous math course, either algebra 2 or maybe pre-calculus. But basically what happens is that if you want to find the next row of binomial uh, coefficients, what you do is you start off with a 1, and then you just add two terms to form the next term in the row. So 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, and uh, we end with a 1. So again... What this is is a nice way to represent, a nice visual way to represent um, the binomial coefficients and quickly find them if you're sort of constructing this triangle. And also it's a nice way to organize all of them at once. So what happens is that uh, when you start expanding things, uh, when you start expanding polynomials, what's remarkable is that the coefficients end up being um, the coefficients of the uh, the binomial coefficients. So for example, if you want to expand something to the fourth, uh, when you expand that out, these will be the coefficients. And we won't prove that uh, today, but uh, you've probably already seen the binomial theorem before. Some Maybe another math teacher has proved it uh, to you. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a common binomial theorem question, and then we are going to use the binomial theorem to sort of explore uh, different relationships amongst the binomial coefficients. So again, the binomial theorem says that if you want to expand something to the n, uh, the coefficients of each term is going to be the binomial coefficients. Also, um, you're going to have a term for every single power of x and every single power of y. And what happens is the power of x is decreased by 1, the powers of y increased by 1. So this is in y to the 0, y, y squared, y cubed, and so on. This is x to the n, x to the n minus 1, x minus 2, all the way down where you have x to the 0, y to the n. So again, let's practice this in a very concrete example. So we have this guy right here, 2 to, two x minus 5 y to the 8. It would be quite awful to expand this because it would take a long time. And what we're trying to do is we're just going to try to quickly find the coefficient of x to the 5th, y to the 3rd. We might not simplify it uh, perfectly because it might involve some multiplication sort of thing, but we're going to try our best. So what does the binomial theorem says? Well, it says if you want to expand this out, you are just going to use the binomial theorem, of course. And that term is going to be x to the 5th, y to the 3rd. So what you're going to do is you're going to first um, write the binomial coefficient that uh, satisfied here. Hopefully my pen will work. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose 8, choose 5, or 8, choose 3. Remember uh, from our last video that 8, choose 5, and 8, choose 3 are the same thing. And then what you do is you take your first term. Keep in mind it's 2x. The 2 is also part of the x. So when you raise this um, to an exponent like to the 5th, um, the 2 is also being raised to the 5th. Finally, it will be minus 5y to the cubed. That's all perfectly fine. And this is going to be the term. Um, once you expand this out and you sort of collect like terms of x to the fifth y cubed. So much easier, of course, than expanding things out. But let's try to simplify this a little bit. We might get a little bit bored and then we will move on to the other questions. But h is 5 is 8 factorial over 5 factorial, 3 factorial. Again, that's why 8 choose 5 and 8 choose 3 are the same thing. And then 2 to the fifth, we have negative 5 to the third. And finally, we have our um, variables. So we can practice a little bit simplifying this. Remember that you want to cancel out uh, big enough factorials. We practiced this in the factorial video. But 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial is going to be 8 times 7 times 6. Uh, this 6 and this 3 factorial will cancel. So it looks like you're going to have 8 times 7, 
which is 56. You're going to have 2 to the 5th, that's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And then you're going to have negative 125 on the bottom. Uh, because 5 cubed is 125, and this is going to be our coefficient. So again, the power of the binomial theorem is that it gives you the terms without having you do a lot of terrible math or terrible computation, which is expanding and foiling things out. And it's easy and it's nice. So now let's try to prove some sort of relationship between the binomial theorem. So what we're going to try to do is what we're going to show is that if you sum any row of the binomial uh, of the Pascal's triangle, so you're summing, for example, uh, these terms right here, which are these terms right here, what you're going to get is you're going to get 2 to whatever row it is. So you're going to get 2 to the 4th, for example. This is the, we consider this the 4th row, 0th row, 1st row, 2nd row, 3rd row, 4th row. So uh, notice that if you sum up all these, let's just practice, it'd be 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1. That's going to be 10 plus um, 1 plus 4 plus 1. That's going to be 16. That's 2 to the 4th. That works. If you sum up this row, you're going to get 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 plus this other 10 is 30. 32, that's 2 to the 5th. So it looks, seems like our formula is working. If you sum up all the terms in a row of Pascal's triangle, you're going to get 2 to the n. So how are we going to prove that using the binomial theorem? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to expand something. So it's going to be something plus something to the n. And hopefully when we expand it, it will be obvious what this will be, and it will be obvious what the sum will be, uh, this side of the equation. So first off, what should we use um, if you're thinking about it? Well, it makes sense that we're going to use numbers because on this, neither side has x's and y's, so we're probably going to use numbers. Also, keep in mind that any number that we put in there, uh, on the other side, we're going to have to raise it to the, uh, a certain power that we might not even know because it's to the n. So it makes sense that we're going to plug in numbers that we actually know pretty well. Um, know whose powers, no matter what the powers are. So really, there's only a few numbers to choose from. 1, because 1 to anything is 1. Negative 1, not too bad as well, and also 0. So what, what should we plug in on this side? Well, I'm going to argue that it's going to be 1 and 1, because notice what's very convenient is that when you add 1 and 1, you'll get 2. So that's going to be the left side. But what happens when you apply uh, binomial theorem here? And let's see why this works. Well, you're going to get n choose 0, 1 to the n plus n choose 1, 1 to the n minus 1. Again, I'm just applying fundamental, uh, not, uh, binomial theorem where we're applying in 1 for x and 1 for y. So all the x's become 1, all the y's become 1. But why is this so easy? Well, of course, 1 to any finite number is 1. So uh, it's pretty easy to compute. So I'm just going to do one more. Uh, 1 to the n minus 2 times 1 to the square. Sort of lied. Let's do the last one as well. But notice, these are n's, of course. But notice that when you add these up, again, 1 to any power is 1. So you're just going to get n choose 0, n choose 1, plus n choose 2, all the way up, choose n, choose n. What is that in summation notation? Well, that's exactly our sum. So it looks like we have finished the question, actually. So Because what is this side again? This is 2 to the n. So by the binomial theorem, 1 plus 1 to the n is equal to this. But because we chose particular numbers, meaning uh, x and y both being 1, when you simplify this, you're just going to get the sum of the coefficients themselves. And then when you simplify the left side, because you can actually do 1 plus 1, it's 2 to the n, we have the remarkable fact that the sum of any row of Pascal's triangle is 2 to the n. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, not just a pretty nice diagram. There's sort of secrets within the Pascal triangle, uh, that being one of them. So now we're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to try to use the binomial theorem to show that if you, instead of adding the terms, you alternate the terms, like you have 1 minus the next one plus the next one minus the next one, you're going to get 0. It's more obvious in a row that has even terms, because it's like 1 minus 5 plus uh, 10 minus 10, so these will cancel, and then you'll do minus 5, so these, uh, sorry, plus 5, because this was minus 5, so this will cancel, and then you'll have minus 1. But again, what we're doing is we're taking uh, one term, subtracting off the second term, adding the third term, subtracting off the fourth term, and so on. But it's still, it works remarkably in uh, terms rows that have odd numbers. So for example, let's just practice. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, plus 6 is 3, minus 4 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. So it seems like it works. What we're going to do is we're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to have something to the n. We're going to hope that it's going to equal 0, sort of like how this one was 2 to the n. So again, what we need to do is we need to choose appropriate numbers. 
But again, it's going to probably be ones and negative ones because we know what those powers are. So it, it's actually going to be one plus negative one or one minus one. Uh, how do I know that? Because I know powers of one and negative one. It doesn't seem to make sense if it was two, three, one half, whatever. And then this guy right here is going to be zero to the n, zero, n is finite, so this is going to be zero, which is what we want. So let's just prove that this guy right here is equal to this guy. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to apply the binomial theorem. So we're going to write this formula out where x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 1. So let's write a few terms just like how we did the first one. So it's going to be uh, n to 0. Then it's going to be 1 to the n. Uh, if you want, you can write negative 1 to the 0. Then n to 1. Uh, 1 to the n minus 1. Negative. So notice that this first term is positive because it's negative 1 to the 0. The second term is negative because it's negative 1 plus n to 2, uh, 1 to the n minus 2, negative 1 to the squared. So again, it's alternating between positive, negative, and positive. Then you're going to go all the way down to n to n, 1 to the 0, technically negative 1 to the n. So hopefully this makes sense. And again, 1 to anything is 1, and negative 1 will alternate, and you'll be left with the binomial coefficient. So let's do one more step. It's going to be n to 0 minus n to 1 plus n to 0, the next term would be minus n choose 3, and so on. And then finally, at the very end, you would have negative 1 to the n. I don't know if n is even or odd, so I don't know if this is going to be negative or positive. But if you knew n, you would know that it was a, whether it would be negative or positive. And then you finally have n choose n. How do you write this in summation notation? Well, it's exactly this guy right here. So it's going to be this right here. Because you start off with k being 0, so you'll get n choose 0. Uh, because the negative one will cancel out because it's to the zero. Then when you plug in one, you'll get exactly this because it's negative one times n choose one. Uh, the next one would be negative one squared, which is one times n choose two and so on. So we have finished our thing, just like our last thing. We've expanded the binomial theorem on this guy right here. It so happened to be that the right side simplified to the summation we want. And it so happened to be that the left side was zero. Same thing with this, left side was two to the end. Um, when you simplify, you got the row of binomial coefficients. So hopefully you see why we're doing this. Again, we're sort of gaining appreciation of the binomial, uh, the Pascal's triangle and the relationship between binomial coefficients. We sort of seeing secrets within the triangle. The sum of any row is equal to two to the n. The, um, the sum of the alternate terms of is going to be two, uh, zero, which is again pretty nice. And and there's not these are obviously not the only two facts. You can look up more facts that come up naturally, but uh, just because of this formula right here, and also the way that the terms work and the binomial theorem, of course. So now what we're going to do is we are going to stop our appreciation of the binomial theorem, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to prove um relationships on the binomial coefficients. Uh, that hold in general. So we're going to prove this formula right here first off, and then we are going to prove, as promised, uh, the formula that allows us to construct Pascal's triangle. Basically, you take two terms and you add them together. So this plus this is equal to this. So we're going to prove that this is true. And for both cases, what we're going to do is we're going to try to prove them using the factorial definition of binomial coefficients. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy right here, and hopefully we're going to... Uh, you, you do a series of algebra steps, and hopefully at the very end, we will have this guy right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first write this as a binomial uh, with factorial. So that's going to be k times n factorial over k factorial n minus k. Remember that n choose k is the number of ways you can, um, or the number of subsets um, where you choose k things. So the subset has cardinality k and you're choosing from n possibilities. So this is the formula, n factorial, k factorial, n minus k factorial. So now let's do this uh, guy right here. So basically what we're gonna to try to do is meet in the middle. So just be careful here. Uh, it's gonna be n times n minus one factorial, certainly, uh, k minus one. Uh, let's just do n minus one minus k minus one on the uh, side here. Notice that we do want to be careful with parentheses, and that's actually nice because you get n minus k, and it'll be minus 1, minus, minus 1, so that's minus 1 plus 1, so you're only going to get n minus k. So here it's going to be n minus k. And basically, all we have to do to finish this is to prove that this is equal to this. 
Well, there's one term that is definitely equal. That's this n minus k factorial term. So what we want to do is we want to prove that k times n factorial over k factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial over k minus 1 factorial. And actually that is not too bad because notice what is n times n minus 1 factorial? Um, it's actually going to be n factorial. So no, uh, we can actually write equality here. We don't even need to write an additional step. But this is because n times n minus 1 factorial is equal to n factorial right here. So these two will be equal to each other. And then finally, this k over k factorial is going to be k minus 1 factorial because k over k minus 1 or k factorial is equal to 1 over k minus 1 factorial. And we practice uh, simplifying factorials in our factorial video if you want to check that out. But basically, um, and or not basically, but exactly, 10 factorial is equal to 10 times 9 factorial, because it's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down, so that's 9 factorial. Uh, so this relationship holds same thing with division. So here we sort of proved it, and it wasn't requiring a lot of steps. The next one will require a lot more steps, but hopefully you see what we did. We proved this equals this using the factorial formula and some sort of properties of factorials. So let's prove a little bit of a di more difficult one. Let's prove this guy right here. So again, what we're going to do is let's start off with the harder side. And we're going to slowly manipulate this to get to this easier side. And it's going to require uh, several more steps, but I believe in us, we should be able to do it. So we're going to take this guy right here, and we're going to slowly get to this side right here using factorials. So it's going to be n k minus 1 plus n choose k. Now what we're going to do is we are going to apply the factorial definition for both of these functions. So it's going to be n factorial over uh, k minus 1 factorial. And then it's going to be n minus k plus 1. So keep in mind that n minus k minus 1. Uh, so, yeah, you again, you need to be careful with parentheses. It's n minus k plus 1. So it's going to be n minus k plus 1. Then this guy is a lot easier. This is just what we have, n factorial over um, k factorial, n minus k factorial. So eventually what we need to do is we need to get to a single binomial coefficient, and that's going to be another factorial formula. But we have two right now. So it seems like what we want to do is we want to add these two together um, and uh, these two fractions together so to make it one single thing. In order to add these two terms together, what we probably need to do is we need to find common denominator. So what's going to be the common denominator here? Well, if you multiply this by k over k, you're going to get k minus uh, so that you can find the common denominator. You'll get k times k minus 1 factorial, which is going to be this guy right here. Similarly, when you multiply n minus k factorial by n minus k plus 1, you're going to get n minus k plus 1 factorial. So it seems like the common denominator will be k factorial times this guy right here, because it's the bigger guy uh, of each of these pairs. So let's do that slowly. So I'm going to have n factorial over uh, k minus 1, n minus k plus 1. Hopefully you can see this in the shot. You can. I'm going to multiply everything by k. And this is just a normal math strategy. When you have fractions, sometimes it's nice to combine them. So you're going to have this guy right here. You multiply this one by k over k to get this guy right here. And you're going to multiply this by n minus k plus 1 because it's 1 bigger than n minus k. Sorry, just without the factorial. And so that you'll have the common denominator. So the next line will have the common denominator of k minus 1. Uh, factorial, not k minus 1. It's k times k minus 1 factorial, which is k factorial. And then it will be n minus k factorial times n minus k plus 1. That's going to be n minus k plus 1 factorial. So what's going to be? Well, let's just sort of expand this out. It's going to be k times n factorial in the numerator. And there will be plus because we're, uh, we have common denominators, so we can add these two fractions together. And there will be uh, this thing times this. So we'll just write that out right now. So what's great about this is that uh, some things might cancel. For example, if we distribute this, again, we'll just have to do all these algebra steps. But we'll have an n factorial k that will cancel out with that. So let's do that real quick. n minus n factorial k. Hopefully you can see this at the end. Uh, plus n factorial. So again, all I did was distribute the n factorial because, again, I'm trying to simplify as much as possible. On the bottom, we didn't change it, so we can rewrite it. 
And again, we did this to cancel out these two things. So it looks like we are left with n factorial n plus n factorial over um, k factorial plus n, uh, n minus k plus 1. So what is n factorial n plus n factorial? Well, you can actually factor out an n factorial there. So that's going to be n factorial n plus 1. So that's n factorial n plus n factorial factoring out n factorial. That's quite a tongue twist, uh, twister. And then finally, on the bottom, we still haven't changed it at all. Uh, well, what is n factorial times n plus 1? As we said, it's similar to this. It's going to be n plus 1 factorial uh, because it's like 10 times 9 factorial. So it's going to be n plus 1 factorial over k factorial n minus k plus 1. So it looks like we have no other simplification that's possible, and hopefully we have our answer, and we actually do. This is actually equal to n plus 1 uh, choose k because it's n plus 1 factorial over the bottom thing factorial, and then n plus 1 minus k is the same thing as n minus k plus 1 factorial. So hopefully that made sense, um, sort of prove the important formula that allows us to find Pascal, uh, Pascal's triangle. And how we did that is we slowly um, used the factorial formulas, and then we slowly manipulated algebra. The main thing was trying to combine these two fractions using a common denominator, and we used properties of factorials. So hopefully this video was uh, somewhat useful for you. You were able to review binomial theorem. We were able to discover some sort of relationship between the binomial coefficients of Pascal's triangle using the binomial theorem. And then finally, we were able to sort of have these baby proofs, especially uh, this one is a little bit more complicated, where we were able to develop um, relationships or formulas of the binomial coefficients themselves. So um, that concludes this video. If you want, you can watch our next video, which will be our final video about counting. I believe in this video series, it's going to be counting with inclusion and exclusion. So be on the lookout for that. We always appreciate your support of our channel. For, so thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in that next video.